And one, two, three. We are not live. We are not live, but we are alive, Gary. Lovely to Hello, Rachel. Gary. <laughs> uh, lovely to have you, lovely YouTuber. Today we are going to be printing with a plastic bag and making beautiful roses. That's the theory anyway, uh, fingers crossed. Uh, yes, so if you would like to skip ahead straight to that exercise, you can of course do that because the time code is below. We would love you, by the way, to give us a thumbs up. Ding, ding. Also, if you would subscribe to our channel, hit the bell, then you get notified when we uh, put content up, which is twice a month for our little doodle things that we're doing right now, and then twice a month for the podcast Breaking the Block. So lots of lovely content to keep you going here on YouTube. So if you would like to do all of those things, that'd be fantastic. Even just hitting the little dee -dee 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 helps us get out into the algorithm. Um, so as I say, if you want to go ahead and do the exercise, the time code is below for you. But first of all, Gary and I always have a little chat uh, before we go into our mindful printing exercise. So today, lovely Gary, nice to have you back in the Tea Time Tutorial Studio. I see that we've actually combined very well, a bit of the new star, a bit of the lights working together. Oh, we have, we have indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't even in the memo. We did it not wasn't. <laughs> ourselves to wear yellow. It must, be, it must be something to do with the new moon. Um, <laughs> anyway, lovely Gary, it's, it's great to have you back as always. So I, I found something on Instagram the other day and I thought I would tell you about it and everybody else that is watching because it's a great little piece of advice for life. And it's called popping the bubble. Ooh! So do you know what this means, Gary? And it's a really great idea. When you are overthinking, so when you start going round in your circle, in your head, which I did a couple of days ago, as I've just told you, and you know all the thoughts start crushing in and you start going but what if this happens and then what if that happens and then and then, and, and then what and you start catastrophizing and you get into this whirlwind and then you're lost in this whirlwind and you can't make it stop what you have to do is imagine that all of those thoughts and words are swirling around inside a bubble oh. a bubble imagine you used to blow them as a kid a bubble and what you do is you get a little pin and you go and you pop the bubble and suddenly they are released outside that bubble. They all fall to the ground and just disappear. And I tried it yesterday, Gary, and I have to say it really did work because I was overthinking um, about my podcast and what about this and what if this and then what? I got myself in the right tizzy and then I just thought, oh, what was that thing? And so I stood there and I visualized popping the bubble and it just stopped. It just stopped. And the thoughts just fell away. And it's a really brilliant exercise. What do you think about that, that one? No, I like it as a visualisation. I mean, I think I've mentioned before that my yoga teacher always says about bring your thoughts to the back of your head. So put them at the back of your head and leave them there while you're having a nice little lie down and just relaxing after the end of the session. Um, and that works for me. And I like visualisations. And I like the idea of visualising a bubble. And the, in the bubble is all these silly thoughts that keep going around in their heads and just pop it. Um, the bubble could also, you could imagine, it doesn't have to pop it, you could just imagine it floating away, couldn't you? You could yes. just like, like when we used to blow bubbles, the bubbles just used to float away. That's what we, you can imagine as well. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny, you think, oh, that's just silly, how's that going to help? But actually, it, I find, and like you found, that it does actually help the situation. I mean, I'm not going to say that you then create more thoughts in your head, uh, you know, two hours later. That happens to me sometimes. I'm thinking, why am I in this, like, this track and I just keep creating these things stop um but I think the bubble one would work for me I'm going to try that bubble one yeah it's good it, it I think what it's doing is it's it's something you can hang on to to try and it's like it's like anything the brain as our lovely guest that came on uh, Tony was my hypnotherapist wasn't yeah. he and he said we always talk about multitasking he said but actually the brain cannot multi multitask that's a myth. You can't multitask. So I think that's the thing that when your brain is going, bloop, you have to sort of bring in something else and then it can't focus on that. So by doing that, you're now focusing on that action. And that means that all of this stuff just naturally stops. So I think there is a kind of physiological thing to it. Yeah, It's not just a visualization, but as a visualization, I think it works really well. So, yeah. And and he also, as well, years ago, Gary, just talk, well, you were talking about your yoga teacher then. He also said to me um, to imagine thoughts as like buses. 
And you just literally, as you're sitting there, you put your thoughts on that bus and then you see that bus drive away. So they are there, you're recognizing them, you're listening to them, but then they just go on, they just go forwards. And that's yeah. what you have to do, just about all clouds. They're just like clouds, just passing by, passing by. Mm. Don't let them kind of engulf you and um, you know stop you from what you're doing. So yeah, I thought that was a good little tip. Yeah, yeah. Pop goes the barble. It wasn't that song, was it? Pop goes the weasel. <laughs> It was Pop Goes the Weasel, wasn't it? Pop, well, I don't know what the weasel, the weasel was. No, what was wrong with the weasel? <laughs> Poor weasel. Poor little Innocent weasel. weasel. Poppy. <laughs> well, that reminds me now of that Will, 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 no, Will Smith. No, not Will Smith. Will Young. No, Will I Am. <laughs> the Will I Am song in the film, What is Wrong With Me? The film Rio. Right. And he is the voiceover for this very colourful, flamboyant bird. And there's a bit where he just is singing and then he just goes, I'm popping, I'm popping, I'm popping, popping, popping. Anyway, there you go. Reminds me of that. <laughs> You've watched a lot of silly films, I think. Because <laughs> I have a child who is no longer a child. She's now an adult, a young adult. But yeah, we did watch that one. So we often used to say that to each other. We'd just, if someone said the word pop, I would look at her and she would look at me and we'd both go, we're popping, we're popping, popping, popping. <laughs> A thing. It's a thing. Anyway, people are saying, get on with it. So shall we do our little exercise today, Gary? Now, yeah. so for, for our monthly tea time tutorials, what we're doing is I am going to be um, on one week saying to Gary, I've seen this. Can you teach me how to do it? And then Gary is going to come up with something the next week and say, well, I've seen this. I'm going to teach you how to do it. So we are something. So on Instagram, I saw this fantastic <clears throat> Thing with a plastic bag now i don't know how it's going to turn out because i think so but sometimes on instagram you can look at things and go oh it looks amazing it's not real so i think this one was real but basically you get a plastic bag and you put wind in it and you paint on it and then you squidge it and you make roses now um anybody who watches this channel will know that i love printing don't i gary anything that's yes, going to do printing yeah. chucking yeah. the marbles in the tin squashing yeah. things i love it so i'm looking forward to this one so should we go to our hands there's my hands. Um, so um, what, I was, what I was thinking was um, we have done something similar in this with printing with um, a plastic bag. So I think we've done with like this soft, like um, these are like sandwich bag. But when you showed me the, um, the application, I said, well, I think the application needs a slightly stronger bag. Now, you've got a, um, a Ziploc bag. Yes. Um, and I I thought, you know, I just thought, well, I haven't got a Ziploc bag, but I have got these poly pockets, you know, the stuff that you put bits and pieces in. And I think that will create enough because really what you're going to do is you're going to paint something around here and you're going to use that to print on. Now, your Ziploc bag seemed to fill up quite well with air. Um, I thought, now where have I put behind me? I am going to put some, what I'm going to do, if your bag will not fill up with air, what you could do, I've just got some cotton wool buds and I just thought, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna push some cotton wool buds into the corner of that bag. So I'm just gonna put that in like so. So with these like these things, what we do is we see these things online, don't you? We all of them, we all look online. And we what I'm trying to do is demystify them because on when you quickly see these ideas, um Really, they're not actually explaining it. They're not talking it. They're just quickly doing it. Usually it's sped up. It's edited. So you just see bang, bang, bang. Oh, yeah, that's great. They've done it. Well, actually, you do need to think about, one, what type of bag you're going to do it on and, and how you're going to trap so it's padded enough so that you can get some air in there and then you can print. So then you can print with it. Now, it feels quite firm at the moment for mine. Um, you've got a Ziploc bag, haven't you? So you managed to get some air into yours. Yes. But it doesn't stay in very long, so I, I, we're going to have to Well, see. that was what I was thinking. If it's I, not like, gonna... Yeah, if I throw my bag around, it's got paint all over it. It's going to be a mess, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to just... What I'm going to do is I'm going to fluff my cotton wall up a little bit more so it's a bit more airy for me. And I'll um, show people what I'm doing with my bag. I mean, literally, yeah, let's I'm do it the camera What I'm doing is I'm swatching it like this, right, in the air quickly. I can't do it on this camera. And then capturing the air. I mean, already it's happened, look. Capturing the air, yeah. it's like a piping bag. So it, it's yes. amazing how that, that does stay in there. And then, yeah, that's the, the corner that you want to use. So that's what you've got to do. If you think, how am I going to get air in? You just literally yeah. 
squish it, squish it, squish it, and then grab it, and then you you automatically get air kept in. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. I've got this Polly Pocket bag. It's actually quite a nice sort of firmish one. I have got different ones, and I'm just going to experiment with different things. I think for the printing, you're not going to be able to. You can't really print. I've got my watercolors here. It kind of works, but not quite. It's not really the right consistency to sort of like be like a sort of a printing ink. That's what you need. So I think what you're going to do is you're going to use some acrylic paints, which have got a bit more of a, let's bring my little palette up. You'll see it's a bit more of almost like I'd say the consistency of um, like double cream, really, or really thick double cream. It sort of, sort of spends like, suspends itself like that. Um, a nice colour for, we're going to try and, sort of get a rose color. So I've got sort of this lovely sort of deep magenta, lovely color here. And then we're gonna put a few leaves around it as well. We're gonna have some greenery around it as well. So we're gonna have a bit of green as well. So this one is just, what color? Just a little bit of green, don't need a lot. So this is cadmium green. Um, we probably need something to apply it with. So we're gonna just have a little paintbrush here. And so imagine either you've got air traps in the end of this, plastic bag or like me you put some cotton wool or something that's going to sort of pad it out and I think the idea is that what I can see is that they've actually just dabbed they just dab on the paint like in little squares around I'll, I'll bring this right up to camera so you can see it in a minute but they just dab it on rather than just fill the whole thing with paint they just do little squares I'm going to just let me just go around do little squares here we are right can you see, like if I, here we go, if I, I just use the brush, like the tip of the brush, and I've just made little squares around there like so. I'm just gonna get another brush, and I'm just gonna then, for the leaves, just a similar type of thing, but you're just gonna put just a, maybe a few leaves, just a bit of green around the outside, and see if that works. Let's just, let's just have a go at that. So, once you've got it on the end, like so, then you're going to then transfer it. So then you're using that method to then transfer it. And literally you're just gonna push it down and you get like a rose effect. That actually, that's not bad for the very first one. And you know, I have not done this. You could just put a little bit more green, just touching a little bit more green around it. Right, Rachel, your go. Let's see if you can get like some sort of rose effect. Well, Might do another one. I thought yours was very good actually. Yeah, look at that. I know, it's clever, isn't it, how it works? Hang on, I'm just putting my paint on. I can't seem to get my, oh no, it's okay. I think it's gonna be all right. Have you got your screen? Let's have, have you shared screen? Hang on, I will share my screen. Let's have a look. It's hard to keep Let's the air in it. I don't know how they did that. Right, yeah, there's, my, see... there's my ah. paint. How much air have you got? Because you want to push the air right to the bottom then, don't yeah, you? Right, go, give it. Just Ready? give it a, a print there. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> well, it's well, not bad. It's not bad, but it's quite, it's quite big. Nice. You've got to get the air in here. Yes. Now that's why I, you know that was the one thing when I saw this, this sort of debunking the 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 Instagram tutorial. Oh, it wasn't a tutorial. It was just them showing you to do it. It was like, how do you keep the air into that end of that bag? Yeah. Because that's not easy. Not easy. Not at all. I'm going to see if I can. So I'm not going to wipe the paint off of this. I'm going to just add a little bit more paint to it. So again, I'm just going to go maybe go over where I've painted before. I'm not. What I'm not doing is just going to paint around like this. I am actually just dabbing the paint on. I can sort of see near enough where it's been previously. And let's see if we can get another couple of prints out of it as well. I'm just going to add a little bit more green. Uh, let's see if I can do another one. Let me bring this up to screen so you can see. Can you see that, Rachel? Yes. So it's sort of like totally. a stylized, it is like a sort of stylized flower shape. I'm going to do one more. And actually, the, the next one, I'm going to actually just see if I can blend it with a little bit of water on a brush and just see if I can just blend it a little bit more. Have you put some more paint on yours? Have you? Yeah, you see, mine is just not, it, there's a kind of look of, but it's just not enough. You see, my bag is not pointy in the corner. I've just realised I haven't got a point on the corner of the bag. Oh, I think you need the cor You need a point at the corner. You need it to be like a cone shape, really. Yeah, you see, look, it's flat. 
yeah no that's not gonna work i'm just gonna use a hair dryer. i'm just gonna just use the hair dryer just to give a little bit of just gonna just dry it a little bit i don't want it so wet i'm gonna just dry it a little bit I'm just going to just, just give that a, just a little dry. And then what I'm thinking of doing is actually what I might do is bring in a jar of water, clean water. And I've got a little brush like this. So I can actually, what I want to do when Rachel comes back in the show, we're going to just like maybe with a, a just slightly see if we can tease some of the more petals out from this, from here. And then we'll see if we can um, make it a little bit more life. It'd be nice to add some stems and things to it as well. I've got my pocket pens. Of course, if you haven't got um, Posca pens, you could use some pencils. So you could use, if you want to, you can always then go back in and work with them, work into it with some colour pencils. Yeah, that quite nice. So I have just done that. So I've now made a little bag, stuffed it with cotton. Yeah, wool. I, I like that. Leaves. Okay, right. and, go, and so. a real, real squidge it down. That's it. Push right down. Squidge. Oh, that's better. That is better. That's looking a bit... It's looking a bit chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum though, isn't it? Yeah. So I did little, I use a square, like square end brush. So I've got like, if you look, my brush is like a square end one. And I just did like little bars going around, like little oblongs going round when I print. So to go round, that's how I apply the paint. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's something we can work with there, isn't there? Do it, right. So what okay. I'm thinking next, so what I'm thinking next, you can, if you want to, you could give it a little dry, but you've, you've left it a little bit of time. It should be okay. Jar of water and not too big a brush, because actually I think what, so if I show you the brush here, I'm just using one like that, just a little brush, but I've got clean water on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, from the centre, just maybe add a little water and then just tease, if it's still a little slightly damp, tease some of these petals out in fact mine's dried quite a lot but i actually yeah, mine has mine's dried a lot so you can just tease them out a little bit you've got something to work on in fact rachel you know those bigger ones that you first and you've got your yeah. um yeah you know you've got your paint with you why don't you you know what you're wanting to achieve if you use that as your starting point and then just work with that, I think you'd actually be able to achieve quite a nice sort of stylized flower shape from that. Are we doing this by watercolors now or our acrylics? No, just use your acrylics, but make your but wet your acrylics. In fact, you know, you can go over the rose itself with a little bit of clean water, and then you could pick up a little bit of the just a tint. That's all you're doing, just a little tint of the paint. And then I think you could actually then just pull in some of those petals. So it's less white and there's just a tint of pink in there as well. Can you see there how I've done that? Yeah. If I bring that right up to screen, right. So I've just used literally water, first of all, just if it's still slightly damp, you'll be able to tease it with a little bit of water anyway and start to let them sort of like work and meld into each other. But if you haven't, if you then with the same wet brush, then just pick up a little corner of the, of the acrylic. So I'm just using this little corner over here. And then you can just where you've got the marks. If you just start going almost like a spiral, you could just start from the center and then just work your way around the edge. So you're getting. Yeah, that works. Is that so, so look, that's how my little rose style roses are starting to look. Now, what's yours looking like? Let's have a little look. Okay, let me just bring mine in. That's yeah. much better. That yeah. Looks fun. yeah so just literally as you said i just teased it um, yeah yeah just with a little again, bit and the, the secret is is not to overwork it so when you've got a sort of a, a, a an impressionist approach to a rose so an impression of a rose don't go then start adding more into it the the the, the moment is when you pull away from it and think no that is enough yeah. If you stand away, look at your work, think, no, I have got a stylized or an impression of a rose, a nice big old fashioned full rose, then that's fine. I think you've achieved that, Rachel. I absolutely do. Yeah, I'm I'm quite do you know, I'm I'm quite happy with um yeah, how that's turned out actually. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and, you know, I think we've just displayed there as well to never give up on what you are doing. No, because nothing's I think at lost. First, when I printed that, I was a bit like, oh, well, that's not worked out like they did it. No. But actually, in the end, it has. Brilliant. Nice. And also, because you're teasing out that green, you do have that depth of colour in it. So it's making it look more yeah. real, you know, rather than just one flat watercolour. Yeah, it's lovely. I'm just, um, I've just done some stands. I'm just thinking I could just sort of yeah, maybe have some leaves down the stems or something only because i'm having a play now so now i'm doodling completely doodling and just seeing what else i can do so that's nice don't yeah. mind that i might um i did you could use your posca pens into it but actually you know like i just said don't overwork it you know sometimes you like hold back just hold back on the on the materials and the the other bits and pieces you've got maybe in your art kit and just think no i don't need to add any more to it that's just enough i'm quite happy with that thing is you enjoy, you enjoy yourself so much though that you want to keep adding don't you because <laughs> you're having such fun you know you don't want to end. you've almost got um a chintzy uh design there for an upholstery chintzy cottage yeah. fabric haven't you yeah. roses yeah. those big roses oh i, I well, need to get a fabric line arranged me <laughs> So, yeah. what, what, so let's just recap. So what worked first is actually, um, I think one of the key things is you can't always get the air to get trapped inside. That's not necessarily going to happen. So what I, as I said from the beginning, we just stuff it with some loose cotton wool or something in there, not tight cotton wool, quite loose at the, in the corner. In fact, now you've worked with your Ziploc bag, that's actually, it has made a rose design. But then the one on the bottom, you used a softer, bag didn't you like almost like a sort of a, a sandwichy nappy bag yes. thing like that yeah and again that's giving you a nice effect but I think and again the the secret is is actually just to maybe a little a flatter brush like this and just work in start from the center and just work spiral around in that when you're at the top here when you're going in and you start from the top but then you just do bars almost like bars of the the red or whatever color you're going to use and then finish off with just a few bars of green, not lots of green, but just a few going around the outside. And that seems to work. You can leave it just to dry for a couple of minutes, give it a little blast with a hairdryer. And then what we've done is then we've teased with clean water and a brush and then just slightly teased that, those little sections out to actually give that rose effect. And in fact, I started almost from the center and worked like a spiral coming out. And that sort of gave that feeling of the, of the rose itself. Yeah. Brilliant. Well done. I love it. I love that. Let me just add one tiny bit more of green just in this leaf. Just a bit there. So I think we, you know, we have actually we've developed an idea that we've seen on on the on Instagram yeah. that actually looked like, oh yeah, that was perfect. But actually when you practically try it out, it's not as easy or to try and get it how they did. But in fact, what we've done is now developed it even a little bit further and using it as a starting point to then develop later. Yeah, which is what, you know, that's the thing, isn't it, with social media? Never believe what you see. No. <laughs> right, let's bring us back into vision then. <laughs> Do you know, I am really pleased. There we are, there is my painting. Yeah. It's mine. Let me hold my. Da, 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 da. Lovely. Very, very yours happy. Better than that. mine. That's I nice. mean, Rachel, yours is better than mine this week. Do you Definitely. think I so? Have to say that. I do. I think if any of any of you YouTube followers, if you're watching this, we need a vote. I think Rachel's is better. I do. I think she's really captured, as I said, that sort of chintzy, rosy fabric design, in the wallpaper design you see in, like, in cottages and stuff like that. Mine's a bit, mine, I think I was a bit tentative. I think I was quite small. I think I need to go bigger. I need to blow mine up a little bit more. And isn't that funny, that's though, because that's what I always say about my art, Gary. I always go big. And then I always say to you, oh, I prefer yours. It's a bit more subtle. But, yeah, I do actually. Do you know, I think you might be right. I don't want to be uh, nice. <laughs> that, but I do think mine actually is maybe, maybe it's captured the essence more mm. of, of printing that flower. Yeah, I yes. like it. Lovely. Well, love the YouTuber. We'd love to hear your comments underneath. And we won't take it personally, either of us, whoever you vote for. 
although I will have a black mark against your name. Uh, <laughs> if you don't work with me. No, I'm not, I'm joking. So um, yeah, please do, do drop us a comment. Um, of course, always share your makes with us on social media, which of course is at Gary Mills Designs and at Crafty Monkeys. We would love to see them. Um, but yeah, tell us what you think about that exercise. I think that's been a really interesting one. So I like this idea, Gary, of me bringing you an idea and then you going, well, look, you could do this. So that is really good. So thank you so much, YouTuber. Thank you to you, lovely Gary. And of course, there are plenty more Tea Time tutorials for you in the playlist. We'll put a link up there and uh, you could go and watch any of them right now. And of course, make sure you sign up because then you'll know when the next podcast comes at interview, comes into view, when the next <laughs> podcast comes out, which is every other Saturday. So Tea Time tutorials on Fridays and sandwiched in between the podcast on Saturdays. Lovely. OK, we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh. Ha, ha, ha.